Hey, what's up stream keepers and welcome back to my channel. And in today's topic, I want to talk to you guys about air pressure or barometric pressure uh, in, in relation to, to stream breathing and also, also in relation to, to molting and of course stream death. So however, before we jump into this, uh, to this topic, I actually wanted to give a special shout out to Likiet. Uh, he actually you know, donated me some of his uh, new Caridina streams. Uh, you know, you guys, if you guys follow my channel uh, and my videos, I actually don't keep uh, Car uh, Neil Caridinus right now. Uh, however, you know, I actually uh, had an invite from one of the international school in Singapore uh, to actually, you know, uh, you know it, it's not just myself. So they invited uh, Jake and, and, and myself. So Jake is my son uh, to, to visit them, to give them a, to, uh, a talk, a demo. Uh, on stream stream hobby and of course you know give them a demo on how the tanks are set up and what are some of the things that needs to be done um, more towards the direction in terms of uh, you know if you want to have a pet you need to be responsible for for the pet as well so a special shout out to Likiet for donating his uh, new caridinus because you know uh, keeping new caridinus uh, in Singapore we don't we don't need uh, you know chiller or or air condition air condition so it is fairly straightforward in terms of uh, keeping them so we set up a 20, 20 cm cube tank for them uh, with a filter and everything so now it's in a school uh, no the kids really awesome guy uh, really awesome awesome kids you know they they ask a lot of uh, excellent questions that you know uh, you know buffered us as, as some of the times uh, however, I think this is uh, a, a really good experience for, for the both of us to actually visit them uh, to, to share some of this, uh, share our, our passion for, for stream, stream uh, breeding. So in today's topic, uh, coming back to it, is uh, regarding uh, air pressure. And one of the reasons for, for doing this is because, you know, especially maybe in, in, in Singapore where we, where we experience a lot of um, monsoon rains, uh both in in the may june july period and of course um, another period in november december january period so for for those of you guys uh, who are watching this you know uh if your area do have some uh difference in pressure because i'm not i'm not i'm not sure uh if you know winter or autumn or any of these uh, seasons actually change in pressure i believe they do um, so so that in, that kind of uh, intrigued me a little bit because all along I, I know that you know during water change uh, the water pressure actually goes you know when the water goes down the, actually the pressure of the, the tank actually goes up in, in, in that sense uh, because there's more air pressure that's pushing down on it so one of the things that you know apart from just water change that uh, that triggers the molting process is it one of the factors that actually uh, helps as well is actually the, the, the pressure so you know what we have observed actually uh, in, in some of our uh, group stream groups um, whenever when whenever the, the barometric pressure uh, reaches about 70 or so which means that there will be a rain that's going to come uh, during the day we are not sure when is it but usually during the day uh, it will come and it's, it's one more or less uh, fairly accurate uh, because when the air pressure is high uh, then it, it means that it's going to rain so every time when there's when there's rain uh, the pressure is high it kind of it kind of like um, without doing a water change it it relates a little bit in terms of the demolting process so it tricks the streams into thinking that oh actually there's a water change that's coming um, the pressure is high and then they they, they, they are encouraged to, to mold um, so is, is it a good or bad thing actually uh, from a breeding perspective you know every time a female molds you know uh, you can actually um, wait for for the males to actually actually uh, mate with the the stream however uh, I think one of the things that we need to be uh, mindful of is that you know is the stream ready to mold is the whole molting process um, completed and ready to mold, or actually they, it is still within that you know uh, not ready to mold cycle, and having that pressure, having that trigger, um, it kind of trick 
trick the stream into thinking that oh no, uh, actually it is really the mode, and it actually forces the stream to mode, and then your stream may, may die in, in, in the process. So this can also be observed, for example, when um, there's an ammonia spike. So I have seen uh, videos and I've also seen uh, some of, I mean, I have discussed with some of the breeders when they, when they, they didn't know what actually happened to their tank, you know, there's a massive death. Um, and one of the things that actually occurred to them is that, like for example, one of the stream breeders uh, sent me a video they put in like powder, like regular water change. But the next day, you know, the entire tank becomes cloudy. The the tank, you know, there's a lot of stream that die. And one of the 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 main cause or main reasons for, for that is like for example when there's an ammonia spike, um it, it stresses the stream. You no, know, it, it doesn't directly kill the stream, so the, the stream will try to survive and it will try to try to move. So it's being forced to move, even though it's not ready to move. So I think that's, uh, we need to really discern between, uh, differentiate between when the stream is ready to move and the, when the stream is forced to move. So if the stream is forced to move but not ready to move, then it will cause some issues, uh, stream death and, and all that. And that is the reason why when, for example, when there is a ammonia spike, um, there will be moting. Uh, you know, if, it, if it's a very large spike in terms of ammonia, you know, uh, your tank goes cloudy and then there's some stream death, normally you will find quite a few modes that actually happen. And and this is when the streams are really stressed, they, they try to, you know, get out of it, they try to survive, they try to get out of the mode. And then, uh, if let's say if it's a uh, ammonia spike, you know, the ammonia actually kind of like a, uh, uh, still continue to burn the skin and then eventually you know they, the, the, the stream just couldn't make it. So in terms of uh, force mode, you know barometric pressure, you know high in ammonia, uh, water changes. So water changes triggers the mode. So tri uh, I think water changes is one of the safest way to actually uh, help to trigger the mode and it has been widely used. However, um, you know uh, air pressure and of course high ammonia, these two um, are not advisable. However, you know, at this point of time, you know, it is a uh, there's there's nothing much we can actually um, do in terms of um, controlling the, the air pressure. So so I think this is some something that I will continue to, to look at, continue to uh, study upon and, and see if there's any methods to actually uh, prevent you know uh, force moting uh, during high pressure high pressure days or what, what, what can be done. I think there should be a solution, there should be some correlation in terms of what can be done uh, in order to minimize the, the force molting process. So I think um, at the end of the day, I think what we what we want, uh, what, what I want to share to you guys today is actually really about, you know, what are some of the other factors that are, that are actually contributing to, to the, 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 the molting of the strings. Um, and one of them is air pressure. And this is something that hasn't been really uh, discussed uh, in depth as well uh, because um, you know there, there isn't much uh, literature around uh, air pressure and, and more things so so it is it has come up uh, in our group discussion uh, during the stream group discussion and and it it actually you know uh, impacts quite a lot of streams um, and and that's the reason why you know we we look at you know if, if let's say if it's an enclosed space does it does it does the air pressure actually impacts does the weather actually impacts it uh however sadly to say it does uh, because this is a you know it's a confined room it's uh it has air condition so it's actually kind of like uh you know in its uh, atmosphere but uh, in its own environment it's controlled however you know the the pressure goes up and down based on whether it's going to rain on that day or not. So this is something that you guys are, I know, uh, there's, there's no no answer to this uh, right right this, right at this point of time. I may need to do more research. I've also asked the, the, the team to actually look at uh, whether is there other, you know, supporting evidence and in terms of uh, any uh, journals that we can actually look at and read to, to further understand what can be done in, in that sense. So, uh, I, I leave it I leave it there to you guys you know you can also share with, uh, share with me some of your comments some of your experience in terms of 
uh, whether what uh, air pressure actually helps or not not helps air pressure actually uh, triggers um, force mode uh, so this is some some of the things that you know uh, that is still an open question mark for for myself and would really really appreciate if there's anybody out there who can you know share some of this uh, information um, because you know some of the streams are are very expensive and and we really want to get into in-depth uh, knowledge in terms of uh, the stream stream hobby as well so uh, that's all for this video i appreciate all those who have been uh, supporting my channel uh, so by the time you see this video uh, it has crossed the 1k uh, subscriber mark i really appreciate it and continue to support uh, the channel um, and for those who are new uh, you know, I, I do have a lot of uh, other videos as well. Uh, feel free to, to reach out to me in terms of what kind of content you actually want to, to, to learn. Uh, I have very great discussions with uh, breeders in, in uh, locally and overseas as well. Um, you know, so reach out to me. You know, there's no, there's no uh, too stupid a question to be asked. Uh, and of course, you know, if you, you keep new dinners, even though I don't keep new dinners, I still enjoy the discussion with you. There's no problem. You know, just, just shoot me an, uh, either an email or WhatsApp or a messenger. You know, you can do anything you like. Uh, reach out to me. I will uh, feedback, uh, contact you back as well. So until next time, peace out.